Hello and welcome to the Lazy Book Club podcast, the book club for those who don't want to read or leave the house. My name is Matt Gonzalez. I'm David Cox. And I'm Josh Matheson. And this morning we are looking at chapter 10 of Peter Pan, which is The Happy Home. The Happy Home. I made a point of saying this morning... Yeah. Because I wanted everyone to know that I've been dragged yeah, from all my right. bed we, we, oh by the, uh, the people who can still work at the moment. Lazy oh, Book God. Club is right, I tell you that for free. It's 10am, it's 10am. I've. It's literally not even early. <laughs> it is I've early. In the kitchen, made a coffee, sat in bed, <laughs> listened to a podcast, all in that time. before. Really? Yeah. Wow. It's really early because it's, it's we're having a mini heat wave and it was very hard to sleep. I just about made a coffee and just about got here on time. (laughs) And by here, I mean my own house. (laughs) And your own bedroom. Yeah, exactly. I've not moved two feet. (laughs) So last week we had the Neverbird, which was quite a short and uneventful chapter, really. Peter managed to escape Maruna's rock in the nest. And the most exciting thing, according to the Lost Boys, was the fact that they got to stay up past their bedtime. And that was about it. Yeah, that was, it was the whole thing. It wasn't a blockbuster. No, it was definitely... You kind of saw why the Disney movie cut that bit out from the story. So the happy home isn't really giving much away in terms of what could be coming. I was imagining this week that we might go to London and Mr. and Mrs. Darling might see how much better off they are without the children financially in <laughs> terms of not having to pay for their milk and their cauliflowers anymore i think looking at a glance of lit charts i think we are actually still in neverland Uh, i don't think we leave at all i think the parents are just forgotten until the kids get back to be honest but um the fact that we are wanting to hear from london makes you wonder if neverland could have been a bit more exciting there's been some stuff some stuff no there has been some stuff but i mean in a world where anything is possible i feel like it's been very tame so far Mm. Well, I'm sure there are adventures on the horizon. Well, hopefully. Well, let's find out, shall we? Chapter 10. The Happy Home. One important result of the brush with the pirates on the lagoon was that it made the Redskins their friends. Peter had saved Tiger Lily from a dreadful fate, and now there was nothing she and her braves would not do for him. All night they sat above, keeping watch over the home under the ground, and awaiting the big attack by the pirates, which obviously could not be much longer delayed. Even by day they hung about, smoking the pipe of peace, and looking almost as if they wanted tidbits to eat. They called Peter the Great White Father, prostrating themselves, lying down, before him, and he liked this tremendously so it was not really good for him. Oh, there's the ego again. Yeah, I know. We don't need him to have any more uh, bestowed upon him, do we? No. I think it's given this idea that in, in America, Jane Barry's like, oh, well, it, it, surely all, all the Native Americans would be idolising their um, liberators. Their and, white saviour. Them... Oh, thank you, so... <laughs> thank you so much for building your choo-choo trains and your gold mines. Thank you. And bringing syphilis or whatever it maybe, was. <laughs> maybe that's what Peter Pan... Peter Pan is planning A, a railroad, and B, a gold mine somewhere in Neverland. <laughs> what do you reckon's in the peace pipe? Marijuana. Uh, yeah, it's Peas. definitely weed. Peas. <laughs> <laughs> Peas. <laughs> This must yeah, like chip shop. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> the great white father, he would say to them in a very lordly manner, as they groveled at his feet, oh, is God. glad to see the pickaninny warriors protecting the wigwam from the pirates. It's so <laughs> just... <laughs> it is it is so incredible there's so incredible. much in that one sentence not only are they like groveling down and go oh the white father and then he says the picking anyway. yeah it's it's kind of like a defense of colonialism really isn't it it's like well if yeah. we hadn't come and civilized these people i'm doing air quotes right now yeah. then where would they be they they wouldn't be you know they'd be worse off 
I've yep. just, I've just, like, uh, I've just glanced ahead to the next little bit of dialogue, and I feel like we're going to take racism to a whole new level. Oh no! Do you, do you know what's really wi- like? I, I've really, like, it makes me feel a bit uncomfortable. I'm also a bit of a glut for it because I'm always like, what can we get to? Also, I'm not like <laughs> donating it anyway. It's bomb. But in a way, because this is a published book, you know. Yeah, yeah you only so see how far we've come. It's not like Song of the South, which was literally banned. Yeah. Off like Disney Plus. So it must get to a certain level, but I'm like, how far can you get? Yeah. So, uh, yes, so Tiger Lily is about to speak. So we need a voice for her. Uh, unfortunately, her syntax is uh, interesting. Oh, have they done the whole broken English thing? Yeah, a little bit. Mm. Do you just lean into it and just go, right, just do it all in that kind of Indian chant music? kind of rhythm yeah exactly so like yeah. do it more rhythmically right so just your regular voice or whatever and like a normal accent but since with... we're on board the cultural appropriation train at uh, every full stop can you go <laughs> <laughs> oh are we not just as bad as barry if we do that yes. though yes and no so what am i doing i'm doing like an indie uh, so, uh to just i do want it like... to go to the pub uh, maybe yeah 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 think, so it's yeah. more like in the rhythm of it than the actual accent if that makes sense okay yeah me tiger lily that lovely creature would reply peter pan save me me he's very nice friend <laughs> <laughs> to be fair oh we're it, so gonna it, get it. letters about this <laughs> i don't think we've made uh, it any worse than, than the actual that. broken english thing it's but. true he actually uses the phrase very nice with L's in it. Oh well, that's not even like how it's supposed. To, like that's that sort of a stereotype of people from like Asia, Asia. out of China. Yeah, yeah. Which is the thing is, true, is that like but... at least we can justify our decision by saying, well, it's there in the punctuation. Yeah. All we did was tell you to read it how it's written, rather than <laughs> actually giving you a director's note, as it were. Yeah. Me no let pirates hurt him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's 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 definitely one for me. Yeah. Uh, she was far too pretty to cringe in this way, but Peter thought it was his due, and he would answer condescendingly, "It is good. Peter Pan has spoken." Always when he said Peter Pan has spoken, it meant that they must now shut up. And they accepted it humbly in that spirit. But they were by no means so respectful to the other boys, whom they looked upon as just ordinary braves. They said, how do, to them, and things like that. And what annoyed the boys was that Peter seemed to think this all right. Secretly, Wendy sympathised with them a little. But she was far too loyal a housewife to listen to any complaints against (laughs) father. She's not a wife. It's good to name it, though. She's an abducted little girl. (laughs) She's living that life. Racist, sexist. (laughs) All Uh, of the ists. Every ist, yeah. Father knows best, she always said, whatever her private opinion must be. Her private opinion was that the Redskins should not call her a squaw. I don't know what a squaw is. I think it's a name for, like, a housewife or a, a a, a woman in the tribe. We have now reached the evening that was to be known among them as the Night of Nights because of its adventures and their upshot. The day, as if quietly gathering its forces, had been almost uneventful, and now the redskins in their blankets were at their posts above, while below the children were having their evening meal, all except Peter, who had gone out to get the time. He'd gone to out get to get the, the time. time? I don't know what that is. Is in t- sure. T I M E, not yeah, not H Y M E. Wendy's like, no, I really insist that this herb be in this yeah. bolognese. Can you, can you not, can you not <laughs> like, improvise? This food is bland. I need some herbs. There's some rosemary over there. It's like, do you know. really, do you really think a patriarch such as the Great White Father would go uh, gathering rather than hunting? I mean, I don't think so. Only time will tell. Way. Oh God. There it is. The way that you got the time on the island was to find the crocodile and then stay near him till the clock struck. Oh, <laughs> that's so laborious. <laughs> that's so laborious. The like, only what? clock on the whole of the island. It must be a nightmare when the clocks go forward. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the clocks, the, 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 the crocodiles there just go, well, I don't know. Has no one thought to like 
catch him and tie him up so that he's in one place. Just hang him from a like a a, a stick or yeah. put him on the top. Put him it at the top a of a giant clock tower. crocodile pendulum. Well, because that's Hook, isn't it? Hook the crocodile's been turned into a big clock tower. Do you remember? Oh yes, of course. The crocodile becomes the clock tower. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, yeah. This is pre them catching the crocodile and killing him and turning him into a village clock. Hmm. <laughs> Poor so crocodile. Funny. Just go to Greenwich. It'd be so much easier, guys. Yeah. <laughs> or just build a sundial. Yeah. The meal happened to be a make-believe tea, and they sat around the board, guzzling in their greed. And really, what with their chatter and recriminations, the noise, as Wendy said, was positively deafening. To be sure, she did not mind noise, but she simply would not have them grabbing things and then excusing themselves by saying that Tootles had pushed their elbow. There was a fixed rule that they must never hit back at meals, but should refer the matter of dispute to Wendy by raising the right arm politely and saying, I complain of so-and-so. But what usually happened was that they forgot to do it or did it too much. Silence, cried Wendy, when for the twentieth time she had told them that they were all not to speak at once. Is your mug empty slightly, darling? Well, they all are. It's a make-believe meal. How does he know? (laughs) That's true. That's true. Not quite empty, mummy, slightly said. Oh, that sounds Uh. so wrong. That is definitely wrong. I don't like it. No, it's like uh, calling someone else in your year mummy. Yeah, weird, weird, weird. He hasn't even begun to drink his milk, Nibs <laughs> interposed. Never not funny. <laughs> <laughs> this was telling and slightly seized his chance. I complain of Nibs, he cried. <laughs> For being annoying. <laughs> I might start Do- using this. <laughs> I complain of Matt. <laughs> <laughs> oh, typical. <laughs> John, however, had held up his hand first. Well, John, may I sit in Peter's chair as he's not here? Sit in father's chair, John? Wendy was scandalised. Certainly not. He's not really our father, John answered. He didn't even know how a father does till I showed him. This was grumbling. We complain of John, cried the twins. <laughs> Petty. Petty it was, it's like a parliamentary debate. Yeah. I just could put my hand up and say, I complain of J.M. Barry. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'd like to put a racist complaint in. Yeah. <laughs> Tootles held up his hand. He was so much the humblest of them, indeed he was the only humble one, that Wendy was specially gentle with him. I don't suppose... Tootle said diffidently, bashfully, or timidly, that I could be father. No, Tootles. Once Tootles began... Just shut him down. (laughs) No. (laughs) No. I like you, but no. Once Tootles began, which was not very often, he had a silly way of going on. As I can't be father, he said heavily, I don't suppose, Michael, that you would let me be baby. (laughs) This is getting weird. Yeah. It's a weird role play. Getting weird? Wasn't it always weird? It's always it's kind weird. of always been weird. No, I won't, Michael rapped out. He was already in his basket. <laughs> <laughs> I love that uh, that's just assumed already. <laughs> yeah. As I can't be baby, Tootle said, getting heavier and heavier and heavier. Do you think I could be a twin? No, indeed, replied the twins. It's awfully difficult to be a twin. As I can't be anything important, said Tootles, would any of you like to see me do a trick? Why is being a twin more important when up till now the twins have had to pretend to be one person because Peter doesn't understand twins? I think it's just him having a role, you know. Just having Mm. a title, I'm the twin of the group. He probably just wants something to make him stand out from just being one of the generic lost boys. Yeah, yeah. He just wants he just wants to raise his station ever so slightly to be mm. note, noteworthy. No, they all replied. <laughs> then at last he stopped. I hadn't really any hope, he said. The hateful telling broke out again. Uh, slightly is coughing on the table. The twins began with cheesecakes. <laughs> Curly is taking both butter and honey. Nibs is speaking with his mouthful. 
I complain of the twins. I complain of Curly. I complain of Nibs. Oh, dear. Oh, dear, cried Wendy. I am sure I sometimes think that spinsters are to be envied. She told them to clear away and sat down to her work basket. A heavy load of stockings and every knee with a hole in it as usual. Wendy, remonstrated, scolded Michael. I'm too big for a cradle. I must have somebody in a cradle, she said almost tartly. And you are the littlest. A cradle is such a nice homely thing to have about a house. While she sewed, they played around her. Such a group of happy faces and dancing limbs lit up by that romantic fire. It had become a very familiar scene, this in the home under the ground. But we are looking on it for the last time. Mm. Oh, a little bit of... Oh, hopefully yeah. something happens. Ooh. It's very narrative It's very narrative. quite a lot. I like it when it... I do actually like that it does that at incremental times. Like, it just goes out into the, the, the writer's voice very deliberately. Yeah. Quite, I don't know. It's quite nice. It's quite nuanced. I think it's probably nice just because it's the only thing that gives you any kind of hint that something's about to happen because nothing seems to happen with the dialogue or the the action of the characters. All of the suspense and stuff like that is seems to always be built by the narrator saying, oh, you know, Toodles, there's problems ahead for you tonight. Yeah. Stuff like that. Do you know what I mean? Rather than actually creating it from the dialogue. It's a bit like a, like a Hanna-Barbera cartoon. It's like, will yeah. the Seven Devil know? Will they come? Find out yeah. next time on Superman Returns. Top like, Cat! Yeah. <laughs> do love Top Cat. Let's do Top Cat for the next cat. one, if there's a Top Cat novel. I love it. How's it going, TC? <laughs> hey, oh, no. Officer Dibble. Officer Dibble. <laughs> Loved it. Oh, we could use those voices. Yeah, we should really get you to like do all of the voices from TV you can do so we can have a list and pick in the future. It's like a catalogue, like the Argos catalogue of me. There was a step above, and Wendy, you may be sure, was the first to recognise it. Children, I hear your father's step. He likes you to meet him at the door. Above, the redskins crouched before Peter. Watch well, braves, I have spoken. And then, as so often before, the gay children dragged him from his tree. As so often before, but never again. He had brought nuts for the boys as well as the correct time for Wendy. Oh, Peter, you just spoil them, you know. Wendy simpered, exaggerated a smile. Ah, old lady, said Peter, hanging up his gun. Didn't realise he had a gun, but sure. Wait, Peter has Apparently. a gun. Big plot point. <laughs> yeah, hanging up his gun. Where did he get I've a gun? No, in, uh, in no versions of Peter Pan have I ever known him to have a gun. He has his little dagger, doesn't he? Yeah. It was me told him mothers are called old lady, Michael whispered to Curly. I complain of Michael, <laughs> said Curly <Stop> instantly. <laughs> I love that. Every time someone says that, I complain. What's hilarious is that I reckon as a parent, she did that thinking that it would make her life easier and it just yeah. hasn't. It just used it again. It actually just made it more annoying. <laughs> the first twin came to Peter. Father, we want to dance. Dance away, my little man, said Peter. Me, my old bones would rattle. And mommy too. What? cried Wendy. The mother of such an armful dance. But on a Saturday night slightly insinuated it was not really saturday night at least it may have been for they had long lost count of the days but always if they wanted to do anything special they said it was saturday night and then they did it i like that i yeah particularly you know at the at the moment with if you're still listening we're during lockdown all the old. days are the same and so just yeah it's saturday. yeah like if you're like do you know what i am gonna have a few ciders on a wednesday night because it doesn't really make a difference <laughs> quite right and it's and it's nine o'clock in the morning yeah. on monday <laughs> i have done that one day we did like start drinking at like 11 just because we were like just for the novelty because it was a saturday, yeah, it was night. A saturday night. night why not <laughs> thanks peter pan <clears throat> oh, f- justifying your alcoholism <laughs> oh of course it is saturday night peter wendy said relenting people of our figure wendy 
But it's only among our own progeny, children. True, true. So they were told they could dance, but they must put on their nighties first. Ah, old lady, Peter said aside to Wendy, warming himself by the fire and looking down at her as she sat turning a heel. There is nothing more pleasant of an evening for you and me when the day's toil is over than to rest by the fire with the little ones nearby. It is sweet, Peter, isn't it? Wendy said, frightfully gratified. Peter, I think Curly has your nose. <laughs> They're really leaning into this role play. This is just absurd now, isn't it's it? Bit, it's a bit old. Michael takes after you. She went to him and put her hand on his shoulder. Dear Peter, she said, with such a large family, of course, I've now passed me best. But you don't want to exchange me, do you? No, Wendy. Certainly, he did not want to change. But he looked at her uncomfortably, blinking, you know, like one not sure whether he was awake or asleep. Peter, what is it? Well, I was just thinking, he said, a little scared. It is only make-believe, isn't it, that I am their father? Oh, yes, Wendy said primly, formally and properly. You see... He continued apologetically. It would make me seem so old to be their real father. But they are ours, Peter, yours and mine. But, but not really, Wendy, he asked anxiously. Not if you don't wish it, she replied, and she distinctly heard his sigh of relief. Peter, she asked, trying to speak firmly, what are your exact feelings about me? Those of a devoted son, Wendy. I thought so, she said, and went and sat herself at the extreme end of the room. <laughs> he misread yep. that. Oh, it's like it's like friend zone, but instead mum zoned. Yeah, yeah. yeah. mum zone. Oh, that yeah. was so odd. Wendy e got mum zone. Oedipus. <laughs> yeah, no, that would be creepy, wouldn't it? On a date, you ask someone out. Mm. And they're like, I see you more My, as I, I see you more as... A mum. That's that's definitely yeah. worse than going, oh, you're like my sister. No, it's definitely worse. Than yeah, that. exactly. You are so queer, he said, frankly puzzled. And Tiger Lily is just the same. There is something she wants to be to me, but she says it's not my mother. No, indeed, it is not, Wendy replied with frightful emphasis. Now we know why she was prejudiced against the Redskins. Then what is it? It isn't for a lady to tell. Oh, very well, Peter said, a little nettled. Perhaps Tinkerbell will tell me. Oh, yes, Tinkerbell will tell you, Wendy retorted scornfully. She is an abandoned little creature. Here, Tink, who was in her bedroom, eavesdropping, squeaked out something impudent. She says she glories in being abandoned, Peter interpreted. He had a sudden idea. Perhaps Tink wants to be my mother. Oh. You silly ass dong. <laughs> <laughs> I've missed you, Tinkerbell. <laughs> <laughs> Cried Tinkerbell in a passion. She had said it so often that Wendy needed no translation. So he hasn't realised that he he has three women all, that all, that all want him. to be romantically linked yeah. to him. And basically to him, anyone who's female is a mum. But that's true. Like, if you imagine, I don't know, like a child in reception, you do have like pretend boyfriends, girlfriends, you like hold hands in the playground for two seconds. But in gen, like, there's no romantic connotation whatsoever. It's just not, it's not no. part of your anatomy to think like that. Well, it's because they don't quite understand that they see the relationships that their adult people around them have, i.e., boyfriend, girlfriend, husband, wife, but don't really know what those relationships involve. So they don't see anything past the title and the handhold. Yeah, exactly. They would. They could play mum and dad in the playground, and that would just be like, oh, mm. and they'll do like, and they'll, and that's it. They, they, they'd go, oh, daddy's going to work, and mum's at home cooking, and a dad comes, yeah, home and like, hello. <laughs> Isn't it so upsetting how these like gender stereotypes are just drilled into us from we're like well, when we're like, like three. Just what you just described. I mean, just I, now I, is just I, everything that's wrong I, with the world, where every girl's told they have to. That's be a how it was. That's how it was when I mean, I'm. 
I, I don't personally believe that if anyone's going like you sexy pig <laughs> um, oh no I know but, he, but that's how it was for us that's like I'm not I don't re- I don't recall playing oh mum's going out to join the army and dad's at home looking after the guy and he's got a papoose <laughs> <laughs> and dad's just launched a fashion yeah. label <laughs> well you never know i'm hoping the kids of today are having are having very similar role plays but yeah it just seems like he's got game in the sense that all these girls fancy him but has no game because he has no idea that they fancy well, what's him what's weird is that he's like he's he's embracing the father role and the son role simultaneously with wendy which is like i think because he understands yeah. what those roles mean because if you are that age, you understand yeah. what a father does, and you understand you understand what a son is. Yeah. So I think he's only, which is hilarious because he hasn't had parents. True, but he's seen he's seen them. You can imagine it. You can yeah, yeah. No, I I get it. I'm just saying it's just yeah. funny that because you think well, he hasn't had a girlfriend, he hasn't had any roommate, and it's like yeah, but he hasn't had a mum. Yeah, and he hasn't had a dad. But you can imagine if and he's you, never been if a you son. ask Peter, oh, do, are you um, in this even in, within the context of the role play? Do you see, see yourself as Wendy's husband? He would say no. But do you see yourself mm-hmm. as the father to the children with which she is the mother? He would say yes. Like he he doesn't. I don't think father and husband are even in the same. No, like a you know scout leader park, like a scout leader. <laughs> He's an arcade. But isn't he here <laughs> saying that like they're not mine? They're not ours yeah he's it's almost like he's 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 played this game of being an adult for so for for like you know a, a few minutes of being the dad and now it's almost like oh i'm kind of bored of that but they're not really mine i'm i'm one of the kids as well like i feel like this is just another instance of him wanting to change games again because he's, he's breaking his bored. own fourth wall yeah yes yeah. definitely he's like oh okay i'm done playing that part i'm gonna pick up this part and i'm gonna play this person now again quite childlike it's like now i'm gonna play pirates and yeah an astronaut i almost agree with her wendy snapped fancy wendy snapping but she had been much tried and she little knew what was to happen before the night was out if she had known she would not have snapped none of them knew perhaps it was best not to know their ignorance gave them one more glad hour and as it was to be their last hour on the island, let us rejoice that there were sixty glad minutes in it. They sang and danced in their nightgowns. Such a deliciously creepy song it was, in which they pretended to be frightened at their own shadows, little witting that so soon shadows would close in upon them, from whom they would shrink in real fear. So uproariously gay was the dance and how they buffeted each other on the bed and out of it. It was a pillow fight rather than a dance, and when it was finished, the pillows insisted on one more bout, like partners who know that they may never meet again. The stories they told, before it was time for Wendy's good night story, even slightly tried to tell a story that night, but the beginning was so fearfully dull that it appalled not only the others but himself, and he said gloomily, Yes, it is a dull beginning. I say, let us pretend that it is the end. And then, at last, they all got into bed for Wendy's story, the story they loved best, the story Peter hated. Usually, when she began to tell this story, he left the room or put his hands over his ears, and possibly, if he had done either of those things this time, they might all still be on the island. But tonight, he remained on his stool, and we shall see what happened. End of chapter. It's quite a sort of one of the most thought provoking chapters to be well, put into. Yeah, it was one of those ones where it just seemed to be a lot of pretending just them being in the house. It didn't really move the story along at all. Is it his no, way? No, but it sort of it had a closure to it. It was like this is the last of their, you know, their their messing around mm. and they're enjoying their little make believe life that they've created for themselves. And now actually they're gonna they're gonna find themselves in, in peril. Yes. I guess. Whereas before, everything was just a game. Like even when Wendy and Peter were going to die, it seemed to be like just the end of some some adventure that they had. Mm. And it was even like prefixed by Barry as like, oh yeah, let's tell the story of that adventure. And like you said at the time, Matt, I think um, we already knew from that point that they were going to make it through because we were like, this is a, a past adventure yeah. that happened. Whereas it now seems like we've sort of caught up with the with the present. Yeah. And and then there's going to be a peril that perhaps 
you know, we're going to we're, we're going to find out along the way. And, well, here's and, hoping. and at this point, we don't know if they're going to make it. I've had could be lying. I've kind of had enough <laughs> of like these just snapshots of normal life. I don't want normal life. I'm in a land where there's pirates and mermaids and fairies. Like, don't give me a snapshot of a boring house dinner. I can get that at home. <laughs> if I want to see parents dance, I can watch my parents. I don't need yeah. to escape into a book in order to imagine that. I guess he's just trying to contextualize them a little bit so that if anything happens, you either feel more for the children's sake of who, again, it's a children's book. So it either makes them feel more emotive towards anything that happens that's good or bad because he they, they form more of a relationship with the character. No, it definitely, I mean, it's definitely a slow burner. So if this now does ramp up to be like a real kind of nail biter, it's been like earned, I suppose. Mm. And I feel like, uh, you know, we've, we've slowly introduced the different factions of people. We know that the pirates are bad. We know that they're plotting. We know that now the Redskins are kind of acting as the bodyguards. And so we suspect that some danger might befall them. Otherwise, you know, why would you introduce that notion? And I don't know. Mm. I wish we got to know the Redskins a bit more. Mm. like yeah. a, a chapter in their camp i just think it's a shame that the peace between them and the lost boys ending up with the tribe being submissive to peter yeah, rather, rather than, than like an alliance. equals yeah that's what i was yeah. quite disappointed by that could have been an opportunity to be a bit more progressive yeah well exactly I mean, dis- disappointed but not surprised no I mean, not yeah. with the era the way that it's been it. written we couldn't really expect them to be anything more than no. than a uh, a background character who gets you know one racist line so yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah so looking through lit charts lit <laughs> the first there isn't actually that much on this chapter. I was thinking that there was going to be a lot more hidden meaning in this snapshot than there actually is. Um, the analysis says at the start, Peter Pan ran away from home so that he'd never have to become an adult and so that he could remain a child. But when he escapes adulthood, he escapes childhood too and becomes a strange ageless father by becoming a kind of uber child. So I think he's basically saying that like, by not becoming an adult, you also then lose your sense of childhood because childhood is almost precious and exciting and interesting because it's short. Yeah. I think but, that but, the amount of time you spend in it kind of makes it even more special and more wondrous and more... Do you know what I mean? Yeah, it's the greatest irony of the story. I suppose. Yeah, but almost by becoming a child indefinitely you almost then don't see Peter Pan as a child anymore because no, he's a mortal. No, presented as such. Yeah. yeah. So it's like he might look like a child, but he is no longer a child, really. He's got as much responsibility as the darlings do. Obviously, different circumstances. He doesn't work in a bank. Um, <laughs> but in, in the same way, he's, he's, got, he's got responsibilities of the people with a mouth to feed and he's the group leader and he's got problems and he's got nemesis and he's got friends in the same way that an adult would and there's not many semblances the only the only semblance of it being childlike is the fact it's fun mm. and it's adventure but it's i think it's taken away from the fact it's like well actually if you'd remained and grew up in london you'd have had way more of a sort of innocent childhood than you would have done going away so what's the chapter title for next week well i mean just looking at the title it doesn't look like this adventure is going to kick off oh, you know, right out of the block so it looks like it's going to be <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> is this going to be a thing is... where everything happens in the last chapter <laughs> i hope not uh so we've obviously just ended ended chapter 10 with wendy's going to tell a story and peter's going to listen chapter 11 is called wendy's story so we're just going to get a bedtime story and then maybe at the end of that one there might be some adventure who knows I'm hoping Wendy's story is actually a thing of her recounting after she's been kidnapped or something like that by the pirates, rather than just her going, I'm going to tell you a bedtime story. I'm going to cling. I feel like it's a little postmodern for Barry. It's a chance for her to come across as an interesting person. Yeah. Rather than just envying spinsters. (laughs) Yeah. Maybe that would be, once upon a time, Wendy lived in a hut and there were 60 cats. <laughs> it's not inspiring. It's not um, inspiring much kind of hope or faith in, in this book in terms of where it's going. I, it, I had such high, po- high hopes for the adventure and the action of this novel. Uh, I'm in two minds because granted, when we have these chats afterwards and we realise, oh yeah, in terms of 
like plot progression in terms of tension building and that he doesn't seem to tick those boxes but i'm definitely i'm not i'm not disinterested in what we're reading no i, I, I agree I'm drawn in no i agree i'm, I'm the same so he's doing something right. i want to you know, know what happens but at the same time i want what happens to be more exciting <laughs> i i th- i honestly I, a, a child of 2020 would find this a hard read yes i think so you can tell that novel writing has been honed and perfected since this point well yeah i guess like all victorian literature i was they're, they're all epics like charles dickens's and victor hugo's they're they're all epics they're all and this and then this and then this and then like mm. hundreds of characters i mean this is but this is almost like a microcosm of that but then this is also a time when tv and radio didn't exist smartphones didn't exist youtube didn't exist and so yeah, this was this a, sole a sole source of entertainment of, yeah exactly exactly this and people telling stories yeah are the only way you know or, or i suppose plays i suppose you could count plays in that storytelling entertainment dynamic as well and wasn't didn't jay and barry wrote peter pan for the stage right yes it was it was a play originally you're yeah. right so that's where it's, it's come from a, a visual but that may be why the scenes are slightly more tame because at the end of the day this is a lot easier to act out on a stage it's a stageable story that's what we're exactly going for home scenes in a burrow under the ground are very stageable whereas big massive fight scenes and flying all over the place is quite difficult to stage true so if you have any comments or insight of this chapter you can message on the lazy book club at gmail.com or you can drop us a little line on twitter we are at lazy book club pod or tag us in your stories on instagram at lazy book club pod Thank you very much for listening and sticking with us. Thank you very much for recommending us to friends and family. We really do appreciate it. And we will see you next week for Wendy's story. Bye. Bye. (laughs) Falling down a whale. Bye. (laughs) 